Hello everyone, this is Flammy, welcome to episode 17. As you can see, a tornado has hit our base, and it is completely destroyed. No, not really, I'm just here for my uh, how to build a base episode. So, I'm going to produce at least one of these for each of the town hall levels that I go through. So, as we are currently town hall level 4 and nearly 5, this is going to be my last opportunity to produce this video for this town hall level. So, this is the how to build a base for town hall level 4. Okay, so let's get started. So this is actually my current base. I have not moved any of the main buildings. As for the little mysterious dots of walls, those are the corner walls. Because while I'm building these bases, I am not going to drag around 75 plus walls. Just for your uh, bored uh, amusement while I do so on video. So it's sort of hard to look at, I agree. Um, I thought it would be easier when I was thinking about this idea, but here it is. We're not going to drag around the walls for 20 minutes just to set up one base. And I hope to actually go through several bases, so um, I definitely spent time talking about why my base is amazing and glorious in other videos. We're not going to do that. We're going to be talking about uh, how to build a base. Okay, so this is just so you guys can see, uh, especially you guys who've been watching my other episodes, what I'm actually talking about here. So um, this is the format we're in. So these uh, corner walls will all be connected by walls in between them. So for example, this wall right here would have walls all the way down here where I'm clicking. And then this one is a corner between the inner walls, so there'd be walls all the way down here where I'm clicking, etc. So this, so if you look at this base, if you're brand new to my series, um, go ahead and check out some of my previous videos and you can see this base in action, when it's fully built that is, um, and all these buildings are lined up along the outer walls like they should be. Um, but this is the core part of the base, and this is what I'm going to be building for different versions. I trust you guys to line up the less unimportant buildings, the mines, collectors, barracks, etc. on the outside of the walls. So I trust you guys to do that on your own without me holding your hand for it. And if you screw up, well, live and learn and take some trophy losses. So, this base, uh, the pretty important, one of the main features is all the defenses are close together in the center. Uh, what else do we have? We've got one storage and one, uh, one storage of each gold and elixir. Uh, beyond that, I decided to include the can castle and the air defense uh, as part of the in inside the main walls. Also, another important feature is we've got this dividing wall that I mentioned, this interior wall, which where it's just clicking, which divides the top half from the bottom half. Uh, the clan castle is in the bottom half, as you might notice. A common thing that people do is put the first thing they do is put down the clan castle right in the middle and first off surrounded by walls. I'm not a fan of that. They just waste extra walls, in my opinion. Maybe I'll do one of those bases later, though. Okay, so advantages of this base, very compact. Uh, if you put all of your buildings on the outside around it, it's pretty well defended. Uh, if you don't trust me, go ahead and look at some of my defensive videos. Okay, so let's rip this apart and build something new, which is going to be much more interesting. And some of you guys might hate this, like trying to decide what base is best. I actually really enjoy it, so I'm just going to be uh, creating the bare bones of a base from the bottom up, and then maybe you guys can do the same thing in the future. I don't, I don't, I mean, like, you can copy people's bases, and I certainly think it's a good idea to get ideas from people's bases, but I think you certainly learn more about how to not only defend, and, uh, but also how to attack uh, other people's bases when you have built more for yourself. So right now I'm just removing everything. I'm going to take it down to, to the town hall, where it's going to go up from there, because generally the bases start with the town hall. Okay, all the walls are gone, all the traps are gone, and let's move the defenses, but let's not move them so far. Nope, one less wall. Okay, there. So some of you guys, I should mention, like really like symmetry in your bases, and I'm also I'm also a big fan of symmetry. Oh, look, there's some more walls hiding behind the archer tower. I'm also a big fan of symmetry, but there's a point when you have to just you should really cut yourself off and say, like, symmetry aside, we just need to have a better base. Oh, hello, Dropbox. I use Dropbox to upload my recorded videos. Thank you very much for telling me so, Dropbox. Okay, so, Town Hall in the center. This is how, how most people should probably start their bases. Moving out from here, we're going to want to have our defenses as close as possible. So, if you like symmetry, as I was mentioning, here's a great way to start out. You can't... You might have noticed, the town hall is a 4x4 four four base. Uh, you can see it right there. 
uh, grid is 4x4, four four, which is terrible for symmetry when all the other base buildings pretty much are 3x3. Three three. So I'm going to compensate for this by showing you the perfect spiral symmetry. Um, so those of you who like math might recall this as being called, uh, oh god, radial symmetry. There we go. Uh, radial symmetry means it's symmetric around a center point, so you have to rotate to find symmetry rather than uh, reflect across a line. Um, fancy words for just saying this is not symmetric across a line, but around a point, which I guess is also sort of fancy. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So this is the base of radial. This is the basic part of radial symmetry. Uh, is you have four pieces going off one one in each side. Uh, you might also note that there's a blank wall right here, blank well, wall, and section. Uh, I'll move a wall here to point it out. So there's a blank hole right here, and there's equivalent on each side. And this is important, because you're going to be building out along that axis. So, just to explain a bit more, if uh, I then place an elixir here, I can place another elixir or another equivalent building, such as a gold mine, right here where I'm clicking and it shall all fit very tightly and be symmetric. Hey, hey, symmetry, like I mentioned, you guys love symmetry? Start with this as your basis. Uh, and this is actually how I started my base. Um, you might not be able to tell once I added that dividing wall especially, but it does have, uh, it did have radial symmetry initially. But I'm just gonna build this out. So let's go with uh, gold and elixir storages next. And we're gonna wanna do our other defenses. So we've got cannons, we've got archer towers. Uh, oops. Please drag. The building mechanic is not great in this. They really need a construction mode. Hey, Supercell, if you're watching this, let us pick up a lot of buildings at once and put them off to the side somewhere and then save our what we're doing. Uh, let's also add this. We have air defense. Do we have anything else? Let me just check real briefly. Nope, that's all the important buildings. Once again, I'm going for what the buildings I consider important. You might not consider them as important. So, if we we're going to pick uh, eight buildings, that is, Town Hall plus eight, those are the eight I would go with. But you say, oh no, Flammy, I've got uh, two elixir storages and two gold storages. Whatever do I do? Well, in this case, if, I, if you only have got one like I do, I'd say take this right here, surround it in walls. Uh, the end. Done. After that, you've got spare walls, so I would put a few as buttress walls and maybe a few as funneling walls. Uh, do you have no idea what a funneling wall is? Uh, well, go read my strategy guide on Reddit. There's a link to my, the subreddit in the description, and the, my strategy guide is linked in the sidebar. Check out chapter 1 and 2, basic base defense and advanced base defense. Okay, so this is one base. Um, then please surround this by walls and spend extra walls doing buttresses and maybe walls beyond that doing funnels. I guess you'd also do, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting the name already. Buffer walls, there we go. I used to have a buffer wall on my base, so people who've watched maybe episode five or so, I talk about buffer walls. Okay, town hall would be outside in this case, which is why it's left over here. Okay, so as I was saying, you've got two gold storages uh, and two elixir storages. What do you do? Well, in that case, we gotta compensate. So, in the case of having two gold swords and two elixir storages, I would probably put one here and one here. Hard choice because I don't want my uh, I don't want this air defense to be uh, too exposed. So I'm going to use this uh, elixir mine, uh, elixir collector, as a placeholder for the elixir storage, and this gold mine as placeholder for the gold storage. Okay. Notice that they are opposite. So if this was a elixir storage and this was elixir storage and this was a gold mine, this was a gold mine. Once again, there would be radial symmetry. Hey, symmetry. Also, it does have the advantage of being harder to attack because when you're attacking someone's base, you're typically either going for either gold or elixir, or the person has more gold or elixir, which means you want to be able to just go for just uh, one of the combinations, just this combination or just this combination, primarily. Um, so, what does that mean when you're designing your base? That means you should spread them out, uh, which means this design, where they're across from each other, is superior than if they two golds are next to one another. Okay, moving on. How would we put our other buildings? So, 
the best way to put this extra cannon, this extra air defense, and possibly this extra clan castle would be probably to do this. Put them over here. And this is when we're going to start saying goodbye to symmetry. Okay, and why do I choose them to put them on this side? Very simply, because the mortar's here, and the mortar has this red ring, which is the minimum range you can shoot at. So we're going to use these buildings to keep units back. So giants and barbarians especially would have to stay farther back. And uh, that's a good thing. I'm also a fan of using natural defenses in my base. So if possible, I'll line them up with uh, things like stones and trees and stuff. Uh, likewise, the trees and bushes and stuff, they grow naturally, slowly over time. Maybe one every six hours, one every, one every 12 hours. It's pretty slow, but if it's in a convenient place, I will leave it there and not remove it. Um, so, what, what, why am I talking about natural defenses like this? Well, in this case, this uh, rock, this stone, happens to be in a very good place that if we put walls right here, there would be no area for them to spawn. So it's effectively a free building outside. It won't distract guys, but it will cause them to have to spawn farther away, and they will have to funnel around it. And that way it's actually superior to the normal buildings, which you, enemy units can walk over once they're destroyed. Okay, so here's another base. This is uh, Town Hall Level 5. This is complete. Uh, I guess this is our third one I've done. I didn't really say explicitly when I finished my other one. But this one incorporates having two gold storages and two elixir storages. Okay, let's do another one. I don't really know where what I'll do for this one. I've sort of run out of the ones I knew I was going to do for sure. Uh, but let's do another one with the... Uh... Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Perfect. This is another good base. Now, it's going to take me a minute to build it up. So it's also going to be harder to read one. Why? Because it involves lots of interior walls. And also has symmetry for all you guys who are fans of symmetry. Okay, once again, we're going to start with our mortar. And let's do gold storage next. Okay, uh, let's do the other critical defenses, then we'll add in the storages. And archer towers, I put them opposite corners. Uh, it makes it harder to attack with the balloons. Uh, let's do the elixir storages and gold storages. Uh, once again, this base is imagining that we had two of each. Because that is going to be the reality. Most of you are going to have two of each. Okay, so as you can tell, this base also has symmetry, but it has all these blank walls and blank gaps in the inside, and walls would go there. Uh, I'm not positive that you would have enough walls to complete this design. You have 75 walls at this level, and as I said, uh, you don't ha you might not have enough to do all these interior walls. In fact, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't, but you'd be able to do most of them. What you might have is... Uh, like maybe this side would be exposed to the air and everything else would be enclosed. What this does do though is shares a lot of walls, so it has that advantage. To save walls, you can also not put walls on one side of the town hall. Uh, what do I mean by that? So you can move this mortar in, and yeah. So imagine putting walls everywhere in the gaps here. So because this mortar is connected to the town hall, there's no wall dividing it. This is, as I, I mentioned this sort of design design earlier, where people just put on tall, Town Hall first and then surround it by walls. I'm not a fan of this because it just wastes walls, as I mentioned. In this case particularly, you need all the walls you can get. So we can move this wall, this in, not have a wall right here where I'm clicking, uh, but there would be walls here, here, and here, which means this compartment, this compartment, this compartment, and this compartment would all still be separate from one another but this one would be joined with a town hall. There's not really a tactical downside to having this, because if they get far enough that they are attacking the walls around your town hall anyways, they're probably going to be able to three-star you at that point, so it doesn't really matter. Plus, if they're using archers to do so, they're just going to attack the town hall anyways, and ignore the fact that there are walls there. What the compartments do is this provides greater benefit, uh, greater protection from giants, it does not allow your mortar, and at higher levels, other splash damage stuff, wizard towers, uh, to do their splashes effectively because your base is bigger with these interior walls. Um, yeah, so you're going to be weaker against mass infantry, 
but stronger against Mass Barbarian. Uh, you're also going to be weaker against uh, air, Mass Air because you don't have an air defense incorporated as part of your inter inner defense in, in this design. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for this. Um, Town Hall level 4, we really don't have that many options. Partially we're limited by the number of walls, which I believe is currently capped at 75. Let me check that. I've mentioned that a couple times. Yep, 75 walls, as you can see right here. Maximum walls. You get 25 more every time you upgrade, which is nice, up to a maximum of 200. Maybe we'll expand that in the future. I sort of doubt it, though. So we're going to have a lot more options in the next one. So I'm going to build this space out right here. Uh, if you guys want to watch me drag around walls, stick around. Actually, I might cut this out. We'll see. So I'm going to start building this space. Actually, one last thing to talk about is what are the most important walls to put in this base? So the most uh, important walls, and by important I mean like what to be upgraded first. Uh, and if you have several levels of walls like me, I've got level 2s, level 3s, and level 4s. Uh, what should be 4s, what should be 3s, and what should be 2s? Uh, we're going to have probably the most 3s, so we've only got a couple 4s. Where do we put them? Uh, we're going to put them at the shared points, which shared points are going to be the sections or walls that are dividing one compartment from the next. Next most important are going to be outer walls, uh, which is where wall breakers and giants are most likely to attack. Everything else is going to be negated to having to be a level 3 wall. And then the least important ones, which is going to be walls which are less likely to be attacked, which sort of counter to popular strategy is going to be your interior walls. So I'm going to put all my level 2 walls in here. Um, in this case, once again, if these level 2 walls are getting attacked, I'm probably dead anyways. Because, so giants, if they get into here, where are they going next? They're going into here next. Okay guys, welcome back. I have dragged a bunch of walls into place, as you can see. And I did have enough to go around. Um, there is one hole right there, next to this one I've selected. Uh, you can see the villagers walking through it. They walk through the gaps if they have one, which is also sort of useful to see if uh, you happen to be missing one. Look for villagers walking, because they'll walk through gaps rather than hop. Okay, then. Um, I put my black walls where I thought they would be most likely to be attacked. Uh, looks like I screwed one up. So I'm going to swap that right now. And this one to the side. Not super important, but if a giant comes in, and a giant is placed anywhere in here, the closest defense is this one, so they're going to go for this corner wall, mostly. That's why I want it to be higher level than the other ones. Uh, so you can see that's replicated around the base. Also, hey, more symmetry. Um, in this case, these inner walls, there's three in here, which they're not part of a complete wall. I could leave them in there, like that, even. Uh, I think actually I'll leave them just like that. Why? Because I got two spring traps already bought. Normally I would take all four out and make some buttress walls. And I might do that still. I am still deciding. I have another spring trap around here somewhere, though. And I'm definitely going to leave it in here. Okay. So I might take these walls out and make buttress walls later. Two to be decided. Okay. So now we've got an air defense, a clan castle, and a cannon. All to be determined where they're going. Um, because they don't fit inside these inner walls, I'm definitely going to put one, possibly two, next to the mortar. So... What is the choice of you? Clan Castle, I like putting next to the mortar because balloons and giants both like to go after the mortar, and I Clan Castle guys are great at killing those very expensive, very important units. So I'm likely to put that there. Air defense, I'm less likely to put near the mortar because mortar is a common target for uh, balloons, and that might mean you want to put the air defense next to the mortar. But, con but the mortar is also a common target for giants. And as we've seen in several attacks, people have mixed both balloons and giants and only deployed their balloons once the air defense has gone down. So in my last base, they were close together, which is a fine thing. Like, it was mainly being a defensive for this at that point, delaying guys. But in this uh, thing, I would like to sp spread them out so that... Not good. Now let's go over here. So that giants deployed to take this guy out don't also get lucky and take out the air defense at the same time. 
So they would have to deploy a separate group of giants or possibly mass infantry to take it out over here. And then we're going to put this guy in here. And this guy here. Okay, so those are all the sort of secondary buildings. Um, now, I mentioned that I trust you guys to do it on your, by yourselves, but because I'm doing it anyways, and I'm already recording, I might as well put in all of the filler buildings. So, as I've said in previous videos, mostly when I've been attacking, uh, you want to put all of these little buildings down in a way that will distract the enemy. Um, actually, you know, I'm sort of silly. So, I was building this base for you guys, <laughs> mainly that... Uh, I don't have two elixir and gold storages, so I am going to promote some buildings. <laughs> As in, I'm kicking my mines and my collectors out, and uh, put these caddy corner, and then promoting, I can decide which of the clan castle, the cannon, and the air defense go inside. So normally I would put clan castle, and I might still. Oh, I'm going to do something tricky here. Oh, this is very mean. Okay. So, I'm going to actually rotate all of my defenses by one. So, drag that out to make a gap. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I just rotated my four inner defenses counterclockwise by one. Why am I doing this? So, the clan castle is here, right? I'm going to put it in here. Why am I going to put it in here, and why did I rotate? Well, the clan castle always deploys guys on this bottom right-hand side. Uh, I think. It might be bottom left, but I'm pretty sure it's bottom right. And so I'm going to put this here so that it deploys guys right next to the mortar. So why is it, what is it going to deploy? It's going to deploy archer, because that's always what I request from my clan mates, and they're pretty good at giving me only archers. Uh, sometimes I request arch barbarian, uh, just depending on how I feel. So we're going to deploy that there. I can also put this here. Um, I could put the cannon here instead. But in this case, I'm going to put the air defense here because it barely covers the mortar. Well, no. Oh, well, okay, so this is a decision. Um, I might put this here. I like putting this here because it barely covers the mortar, and people might think that it might not, so they might deploy a mass balloon to take out the mortar. But they're probably not at this level, especially because there's with two archer towers, which are very obviously in range of shooting down balloons over the mortar. They're definitely not going to do that. So I'm going to move this out here and move the cannon in here. Cannons also have, uh, I've mentioned in the previous video, but I'll cover again because it's very important at lower levels. So this is a level four, note four, ta archer tower. It's got 25 damage. It also has 10 range and can target both air and ground. Compare this to a cannon. This is a level 5 cannon. 5, note that. It also has 25, so it's equal. One high level higher and equal damage. Has one less range and can only hit ground. So, in this regard, Archer Tower is much better, which is why I had one cannon sitting on the outside rather than one Archer Tower. So if I was going to leave a turret out there other than the anti-air, I would leave a cannon. Most important one being the mortar, which is why I also upgrade them first. Okay, moving on. Uh, I feel like I was going to say something, but I've now forgotten. That is alright. So we're going to be just dragging these other buildings here. Uh, something good to know is this mortar cannot protect this collector from archers. The way that there's one wall dividing it and it is offset completely. Uh, yeah, so we're not going to put that there. We're going to put that there. Why is that important? Well, this is a sort of minor detail, but see this barracks? This got 510 health at this particular level. See this collector? This got uh, uh, 310, I said uh, it was. I think I said 500. This one's got 590 health. Uh, so clearly this collector has got a lot more health. So we're not going to let them do damage to that for free with archers, so we're going to put them right in front of the units. Uh, we're going to put the builder's huts in little places where I can't fit other stuff. So one went here, one went here. Uh, barracks and stuff to follow. Let's get another mine or collector to put next to the mortar. Once again, high health. Uh, 
Uh, let's put this barracks over by the cannon, sort of like the other one. Uh, let's go with that, I think. Notice my goal is to keep everything as close to the walls as possible. I mentioned it, but it's important, so I'll mention it again. Be sure to put them close to the walls. If, you, if I did put them, for example, like this, so right there, that's the greatest possible uh, spawn denial area. By putting this, the walls cover one square, this covers another one square, and people can't spawn until all the way out here. This is not good because these buildings' goal is to slow down enemies once they're attacking them, once they're in range of these turrets. Their goal is not to push back the spawn area. Spare walls can do that for you. Uh, maybe buildings you can't defend at all, like army camps, can do that for you. But do not use your uh, prime, uh, mines and collectors, especially, and even barracks to do that. Okay, I'll put that there, that there. I want to move this wall, put an army camp. Um, didn't save. I've decided where to put that wall. Uh, I sort of want to put it near this mortar, as I'm going to consider that the most likely place for people to attack. Uh, I'll put it there. I don't really expect it to soak up that many. It's a pretty bad buttress. Why? Because the people are going to deploy wall breakers here, which means they're probably going to hit both of these walls rather than just this one. This buttress will only soak up damage from guys wall breakers deployed over here and they'd hit right here. Actually, in that case, it means it's sort of worthless. <laughs> but I'm going to move it. I just I just argued myself out of putting it there. So I'm going to use this extra wall as a spawn denial. So right there. So they can't spawn close to the mortar. Or as close to the mortar as before. Uh -huh. Anything else? Oh yes, we do have this one army camp. I would probably put it right here normally. Uh, no, I wouldn't, because I want the air defense to be here where it's covered by both of these. Uh, maybe I would put it... I sort of could put it right... Yeah, I'll put it right there. That's a fine place. I'm basically finding a place to put it that... Uh, makes it not totally worthless. Army camps, they have low health. Uh, I'll pull it up. I think they're low, like, 300-ish. Oh, 700. It's relatively high, actually. Um, so they've got good health, I guess. Today I learned. Uh, they've got good health, but they obviously are massive, and that is their worst factor. Let's tighten this side up. Uh, this goes to here. This goes to here. I mean, this part is sort of less important. And honestly, it really doesn't matter in my case, because I'm not going to be using this base for very long. I'm merely Town Hall level 5, and that means we get a whole bunch of new uh, defenses and walls and traps and everything to play with. Which means I'll be doing this all over again. But I'm mainly doing this for your sake, log logicing my way through all the different choices. If I was going to keep this base for a while, I would take out some of these stones to make it more compact, so I can have the collectors and stuff closer to the archery towers, stuff like that. Um, but let's just find somewhere to throw this barracks. Oh, I'm definitely going to put this next to the mortar. That's a great place for it. Why? Because it's going to slow infantry down on their way to get to the mortar, which means giants that come after the mortar are going to be unsupported or less supported. Okay, that just leaves where to put this buttress wall, and that's, once again, unimportant. We'll put it right there. Okay, so that's our new base. I could, if I wanted more buttress walls, pull these two walls out, but I'll leave them there for now. Like I said, not that important. We're not going to be using this base for very long. Maybe I'll get, yeah, actually I'll almost certainly get one attack on it tonight, possibly more. Why? Because I've got a ton of resources and no builders to spend it with. And I can't do any researches for another two hours. So we're definitely going to get attacked by someone who's greedy and wants those resources. Uh, this translates uh, 30... 130,000 translates to about 33,000 resources available to be stolen. So even higher levels, maybe mid-20s, 
low 30s will find that a tempting target, especially because we're a lower level. But can't do anything about it, so next video will likely include someone attacking me. Um, honestly, I like my previous base better, so if you're looking at this video just for base ideas to straight copy, copy the my previous base out of one of my previous videos. Um, why am I not a fan of this one as much? Because this is better against giants, but I really like the traps in my other base, which are good against giants, and I really like how my other base has those buttress walls, which as you saw in many of my previous videos, are very effective at this skill level. Uh, these lower level players, they don't understand quite the wall breaker tactics, the AI behind them, so you should, so they definitely deploy them incorrectly against buttresses often. So, okay, this wraps up a very long video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Once again, please check out Reddit. It's got a really, really, really good base defense guide I, writ I wrote. Writ. Uh, on there, it is text and image based, and uh, it covers both basic base defense as well as advanced base defense. And it talks about the exact mechanics behind things like buttress walls, buffer walls, funneling walls, why I'm doing one thing over the other, picture examples of what not to do and what to do, uh, and just sort of run to the checklist. Whereas these videos are more like I mention things as I see them in-game or as I'm thinking about them and not quite as structured. So check that out on Reddit. Link is in the description. Uh, links to the specific uh, strategy guides. Chapters are in the sidebar, the right side of the subreddit. If you're a Redditor, subscribe. If you're not, check out Reddit because it's awesome. And uh, you can also check out Reddit and find out what the deal is with our clan system. Uh, please just don't randomly search for me in-game and join. But we do welcome all players who uh, find us through Reddit. And there are reasons to join and how to join on the subreddit there as well. So you can look for the link for that as well. Okay, to end it, thank you very much. And have a great day, guys.